Hello, welcome back to European Higher Education Fair Indonesia 2020 goes online. This is Institution Webinar Series. My name is Lukman and I'm going to be your moderator. This next session will be presented by University of Birmingham. Please stay tuned until the end of this webinar because we will have a Q&A session. If you have any questions about the presentation or anything related to University of Birmingham, you can submit your questions in our YouTube comment section anytime throughout the, pre throughout the presentation. Please welcome Ms. Kerry from University of Birmingham. The time is yours. Hello, thank you, Lukman. Thanks for the introduction and thank you for moderating the session. Um, it's lovely to be here today. Um, unfortunately, obviously, we can't be out in Indonesia with you, but we can get to you virtually. So that's a, a, a good thing. Um, I will just share my screen so we can have the presentation. Okay, I'll just check that we've got the sound sharing and then we will start. Um, so just to introduce myself a little bit, I'm Katie, um, Katie Friend. I'm one of the international recruitment officers here at the University of Birmingham. Um, and I usually come out to Indonesia quite often, usually about five times a year. So it's a bit of a difference this year that I've been uh, stuck here in the UK but obviously it's lovely to be able to come and meet with you virtually. Um, so we'll just do a short presentation and we'll also have plenty of time for Q&A as well and obviously we'll be here for the next couple of days um, on our virtual booth as well. So firstly just got the short video to show you so um, this will just give you a little bit of flavour for the University of Birmingham. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of flavour of, of what the University of Birmingham is about and what we cover in terms of our courses. Um, I'm going to start with talking a little bit about why would you study at a UK university? Because um, I know a lot of you might be thinking about other countries, you know, you're based in Indonesia, there may be other countries that are closer to you. So why would you particularly think about coming to the UK? Well, we've got a world-class teaching reputation. So a lot of our universities are very well established. Obviously, University of Birmingham is one of the most um, established universities and um, over 100 years of teaching. But we do have other universities that are ancient universities that have been teaching for maybe 900 years or more. 
We've also got teaching by experts in their field, public universities as well in the UK. So we have our own autonomy over what we teach um, and what we deliver to our students. And there's also robust quality control. So we have lots of organisations that come in and they test the quality of our teaching, the quality of our research, etc. So you can be confident that you're coming to a good university. The facilities are great and I'll show you a few photos of the campus facilities a little bit later and also very modern accommodation as well. We also focus on small group teaching, personal attention, so you have one-to-one -one, um, sessions with your lecturers and professors. And we also have high completion rates. So obviously the point of coming to university is to get a good degree and obviously graduate with that degree. And in the UK, generally our completion rates are very, very high. We also have a really good student experience. So we're, we're focused on obviously your academic element, but also we really want you to have a good experience when you come and study with us as well. And there's also that emphasis on individual learning and experience. So we offer things like study abroad opportunities, internships, or even year-long placements as well on undergraduate degrees. Um, there's also the opportunity to specialise early. So unlike the US, where you have to maybe do a different degree, so if you're coming for an undergraduate degree, um, you might have to do something like um, a, a more general international relations before going on to law, or something like biomedical science before going on to medicine. You don't have to do that in the UK. You can actually go straight into that degree programme. Um, similarly, the length of study is slightly shorter as well. So master's degrees, um, which I'm sure the majority of you are thinking about today, they're only one year or 12 months in the UK and PhD is generally three to four years. We've also got a very multicultural, multicultural society in the UK, welcoming um, people from all different cultures, um, particularly in Birmingham, and we're a very multicultural city, and lots of different place, um, uh, diaspora of communities from all over the world that are, 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 have taken a base in Birmingham itself. Good infrastructure as well, so good travel links. We're basically the centre of the transport network. The UK is very, very small. Um, if you go to Australia, you fly for maybe an hour. Where are you? You're still in Australia. If you come to the UK and you fly an hour, you could be in Paris, you could be in Amsterdam. So you've got all of those options on your doorstep as well. It's also very safe in the UK as well. So obviously strict um, gun control laws and stuff like that, a very good police service and a good, um, strong, stable government as well. So just moving on a little bit to which university you might choose. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because this is obviously a very personal choice, um, but just a few pointers of what you might like to think about. So do you want to be in a city university or a campus based, a large or small institution? You want to think about reputation and ranking. I know um, one of my colleagues from Bath was talking about rankings earlier as well. And that's something important for you to think about, um, you know, ranking of the overall university, but also of your individual course. Um, you know, some universities may be slightly lower on the overall ranking but that course could be number one or number two um, within the UK. You can also look at the world rankings and also other rankings as well, such as student employability rates, um, rankings for um, uh, student satisfaction. So not just the academic ranking, but also other rankings as well. Um, we also think, obviously, employability is important. You know, the main aim of you coming to university is to go off at the end with a good job. Um, so that's another thing for you to consider. We also recommend looking at entry requirements. So each of us have different entry requirements. And obviously this weekend when we're going to be at our virtual boot is a really good opportunity for you to ask questions about what grades you might need to get into our, our universities. So be realistic, but also be aspirational as well. So, you know, have a think about which universities you might want to apply to. Look at the courses. Um, they are all different. You know, an international development degree at University of Birmingham would be very different different to an international development degree at the University of Sussex, for example, um, because we have specialisations, our staff have research interests, um, so our degrees can be quite different. So make sure you find a degree um, that's interesting to you. You know, I get students say, I'm desperate to come to University of Birmingham, but we don't necessarily have the right degree programme for them. So, you know, it's finding that match both for the university, but also for your degree programme. 
look at facilities, uh, not just for your course. So obviously, you know, maybe if you're coming for something like engineering, you want to see what um, research facilities you have in terms of labs and stuff like that. But also from a personal level, if you really like swimming, for example, you might want to make sure that on your campus you know, or your university environment that you've got a swimming pool available. And I know that sounds a little bit silly, but, you know, you're spending a good chunk of your life at this institution. So you want to make sure that you've got the facilities that you need. So moving on a little bit more about Birmingham, um, we are in the city of Birmingham. So just outside, um, we are about uh, seven minutes away from the city of Birmingham by train. And we are the second largest city in the UK. Um, we've got a population of over a million. Um, and we're about an hour and a half from London as well. So quite closely related. Obviously, the UK is very small. Um, the time it takes you to get from maybe one part of Jakarta to another, uh, you'd actually be in a completely different city um, in, in the UK because um, our traffic's not quite as bad as Jakarta. Um, we've got good transport links, you know, good network in terms of rail links, um, bus links and stuff like that. And we do also have an international airport. So when I come out to Jakarta, I usually fly back via Dubai. So two flights of about sort of seven eight hours uh, but then I'm straight back into Birmingham um, and also back at the university quite quickly. Um, it's a young community as well so about 44 percent of the community are actually under 30 so it's a really young population and that's mainly due to the fact that we've got so many students that are, are actually based in the city. Lots of music venues, sporting events as well and we will be hosting um, the 2022 Commonwealth Games so any of you that are thinking about coming in that year you'll have an opportunity to get involved in that so either watching the games and um, some students usually volunteer as well to help out as ushers and you know get people to their seats and stuff like that and um, so that's going to be a really good um, opportunity and a really good buzz for the city as well. Um, as I mentioned before it's all, also really easy to travel to other cities in Europe so if you want to make the most of your time you know you're coming all the way over um, to a different part of the world so you want to make the most of that so we've got look, really good travel links with Europe as well. Um, just a photo here of our campus so just to show you what our campus looks like it's a beautiful campus um, I studied here um, back in 2003, so um, obviously a long time ago, um, but the one thing that attracted me to the university was the campus, you know, the, the beautiful greenery, um, all the facilities are there as well, so it's a really, really lovely place to be based. Um, and just to show you the proximity to campus as well, so, um, so proximity to the city, sorry. So this is our campus down in the bottom that's ringed here with the clock tower right in the middle. And this bigger circle in the background is actually our city centre. So you can just see how close it is. You can walk that um, in about 45 minutes. And um, we've got canals that connect the university right to the city centre. Um, train network, we've also got buses and um, taxis like, you know, already available as well. Just a little bit about our courses. So just to let you know what we cover, we are a very comprehensive university. So we cover pretty much all programmes. Um, what we have is five colleges um, and within these colleges, we have schools and departments. So I've listed all of those here. Um, obviously you will find a lot more information about these on our websites as well, just to get a bit more information about which courses we have and whether they fit with your um, particular interest. But firstly, we've got College of Arts and Law, we've got the Law School, We've got English studies and um, teaching English courses, linguistics, there's cultures, languages. We've also got things like heritage studies within that department as well. Then we've got engineering, so aerospace, chemical, um, chemistry, computer science, um, engineering, maths, uh, metallurgy materials, and we've also got physics and astronomy. Moving on, we've got the life and environmental sciences. So you've got things like biosciences, geography. Um, we've also got environmental sciences, psychology and sport courses. Um, physiotherapy also comes into that one as well. Then medical and dental sciences, um, a huge range here. It's a really big college. So we've got medicine as a degree, but we also got um, programs that are specialised in particular areas. And then finally, the social sciences, so business, um, government, society, international relations. Just to touch briefly on entry requirements, but um, what I would recommend is you check on our website and um, the entry requirements for each of these courses. Um, but if you're coming for undergraduate study, um, we tend to recommend obviously A-levels or IB 
um, is, is, is required and then that will get you into the first year of our undergraduate study. If you are taking national curriculum, um, so high school or something in Indonesia, you can still come to us, but a foundation program is required, but we do offer that at our university. Um, for postgraduate study, which I'm sure most of you are, are thinking about today, um, we're usually looking for a good bachelor's degree, so a recognised bachelor's degree, and GPA is generally about 3.0. Um, if you're from a very good institution, maybe University of Indonesia or Gajamada, for example, we may be able to be a bit flexible on that and come down to 2.8. Um, so it depends on the institution as well as, as the kind of background of the course. Some courses will have subject specific requirements. Um, so for example, if you want to come and do um, engineering with us, advanced mechanical engineering, you'll need a degree in mechanical engineering or physics. Um, if you want to do our marketing communications degree, it doesn't necessarily have to be a full marketing degree, but you will have to have a couple of modules. We do also have some conversion courses. So say for example, you're currently studying engineering, but you want to do business. We do have things like international business, and that's a conversion course, so you can come from any other background. And the same um, with something like in, uh, computer science. We also have an MSc in computer science that you can come from any background and then move on to computer science as well. So just make sure you check that out on our website to make sure you, you get the idea of what you need. Um, just briefly touching on English requirements as well. So obviously we need an English language qualification, um, IELTS, TOEFL or Pearson. Um, we, there are a few others we accept as well, but just highlighting these ones here. Um, please do check the individual pages just to get an idea of what we would need from you. Um, but these are kind of the idea in terms of grades. So most of our courses are somewhere between a six to a seven in terms of IELTS um, or 80 to 95 in terms of the TOEFL. Um, so moving on a bit about University of Birmingham specifically, we are approximately 10,000 international students. We've got about 34 students overall, uh, 34,000 students overall, I'm sorry. Um, so we're a very big institution and our 10,000 international students are actually from about 150 different countries. We're part of the Russell Group as well, which is a research intensive group of universities. And we were founded back in 1900. So we're very well established in terms of our teaching. We offer lots of opportunities on our courses. So internships, field trips, placements, you're abroad if you're doing undergraduate degree and there's also some exchanges even on our postgraduate courses if you come to maybe something like international relations international development you'll often do a trip um, to the european union um, headquarters in brussels and um, we do also have pro bono work as part of something like our law degree um, and there's also pitch side support for things like physiotherapy or sport and exercise sciences and um, the campus You've obviously seen a few photos, is a very, very beautiful campus, which is just outside of Birmingham city centre. Um, we've got our own train station, which is called University, because we're the only university in the UK to have our own train station. We've got an art gallery on campus, botanical gardens, concert hall, 24 hour library, sports centres, banks, coffee shops, restaurants, everything you would need. It's basically a, a, its own little um, city in itself. Just to go through a few photos now, I won't spend too much time on these, but this is our main kind of oldest building on campus. Um, this is our business school, our engineering department. We've got our law school here, our music building, university center. Where we've got lots of opportunities for, um, for you to have a, a drink with friends or coffee and get lunch and stuff like that as well. And then this is our main library, which is open 24 hours a day um, for those of you that are really keen to study as much as you can. Um, and the campus is very much a campus for, uh, for study and leisure. So it's not just an academic environment. We make sure that you've got obviously lots of things there to take place, uh, take part in as part of your um, personal enjoyment as well. Um, there's just some examples of student societies. So we've got um, obviously an Indonesian society, which I've listed here. Um, but we've got things like the Disney Society. Um, we've got debating. We've got baking societies, tea, um, different religions, Islamic society. Um, so you can get involved in as many of those as you like um, for your personal enjoyment. 
And then finally, we've got our careers network, which is obviously a really important part of, part of, of the, the, the process with us. So, you know, you're coming to study with us to get a good degree um, to hopefully go on to a really good job at the end of it as well. So our careers network is there um, as a really good support network to help you find a good job at the end of your degree program. Um, Birmingham's got extremely high employability rates with around 93% of our students getting a job um, within about six months of graduating or perhaps going on to further study. Um, we're also the second most targeted university in terms of employers. So people come on to campus to meet with our students. And, and this photo in the background here is actually in our great hall. And that's employers that are coming on to campus to meet with our students. And finally, just some examples here of what companies you could work for, um, you know, dream big. Um, you know, this is what we always say. Think about the, the, the future. And these are some examples of companies that students have actually gone on to after our degree. Um, so that's pretty much it from me in terms of the presentation. Um, I've got my email address here, our website, and I've got all of our social media. Um, so hopefully you can engage with us on those sites as well. And obviously we will also be here for the next couple of days um, at the EHEF fair um, virtually this year, um, but we will be there um, in our virtual booth. Um, so thank you very much for joining us. I'll pass back to Lipman, who can probably take any questions that might have come in. Okay, thank you so much for the presentation. I really love the video. That's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> and now we're down to the Q&A session. So if you have any questions, you can type them down on our YouTube's comment section. Okay, the first question would be, how the University of Birmingham manage application during this pandemic? As of many IELTS test center are now closed, can we still apply and attach the IELTS certificate later? Yes, so that's absolutely fine. So we are quite flexible and we have made some arrangements, obviously, during the pandemic. Um, so you can apply first um, in terms of application. Um, the application for our programs um, for PG programs is directly through our website. Um, so once you find the course that you want to apply to, you can just fill up the application and attach all your documents. Um, if you haven't taken the IELTS, that's not a problem. You can take that later on and then attach that once you've um, taken that qualification. Um, we are quite flexible as well. So like I say, we will accept TOEFL, we'll accept Pearson. Um, we will also accept Duolingo, um, the newer one where, where they've got all the different band scores available. Um, so we are quite flexible on that as well. Um, but we also will accept scanned documents as well. So usually we need original copies or them to be verified by an agent or British Council or, or a, a, a recognised body. But we'll also accept scanned copies and then you can just bring the originals with you because obviously we don't want people travelling around to get everything um, you know, stamped and signed given the different difficulty in the situation. Um, so don't worry about that at all. We will be certainly supportive of you in, in all, all situations. Okay, thank you. Next question. Is it possible for someone who has a master degree in Indonesia, but the person wants to take another master program in University of Birmingham? Yes, yeah, so that's absolutely fine. So even if you've got a master's that you've taken in Indonesia, you can come and study a master's with us in the UK. Um, that's absolutely fine. You will obviously need to Put that on your application that you've already got a bachelor's and a master's degree um but not a problem at all because you will have a slightly different focus you'll still have a slightly different education system so that's absolutely fine the only issue comes is if you've already done a master's in the uk then it can be difficult to do a second master's but if you've done it in another country um like indonesia that's absolutely fine okay next question what are the documents needed for us to apply and what will make our applications stand out? Okay, so in terms of documents, we'll be looking for transcripts from your degree programme and your obviously graduation certificate if you've completed. Obviously, you don't necessarily need to have completed your degree, but if you have, we would ask for that as well. Two reference letters. Um, one has to come from the university that you've applied, uh, you've studied at. The second can be academic, uh, sorry, it can be professional, so it could be from a workplace or something like that. We'd also need your passport, 
Um, I know some of you in Indonesia have a, a standard passport and then you change that. So obviously, whichever passport you've currently got, you can submit that. If it needs to change, that's not a problem. And then we also need um, a little personal statement. So something maybe around sort of maximum two pages of A4 to say why you're interested in the course and why you want to study that. Um, so outlining, you know, that the, you're interested in the programme. Um, we do have an application form for you to fill up as well. So that's on our website. Um, but we do have a variety of, of, of um, assistance with that as well. So we've got um, agents based in Indonesia. We've got the British Council that's based out there as well. Um, so if you did need help with that actual application, um, that's not a problem. But that's kind of generally the documentation that we would need. Okay. Next question. The question that everyone wants to ask, is there any scholarship? From... Yeah, so <laughs> we do have some scholarships. Um, I was going to put a slide in, but a lot of our uh, scholarships are just waiting to be confirmed for next year. Um, so please do keep an eye on our web pages because they will be um, being confirmed in the next couple of weeks. Uh, or so. Um, so we do have scholarships available for international students. We work very closely with LPDP, for example, in Indonesia. And we're on the list for all of their courses. Um, so if you did want to come through that route, um, then we also do have some partial scholarships that are offered by the university. So, for example, the business school has some scholarships of 2,500 right up to fully funded scholarships. Um, engineering will have some. Um, we'll also have scholarships for our life and health sciences, our medical school. Um, so please do check our website. Um, generally, um, my advice is if you're looking for a university scholarship, they will generally be partial. So, you know, maybe 3,000, 5,000. Obviously, if you're looking at one of our partners like LPDP or Chevening, then we do offer some full uh, funded scholarships, but obviously they are a lot more uh, competitive as well. Hey, next question. Will there be any chance to do a research on master with some industries? Yes, so all of our master's programmes will have a three-month research project as part of the course. So you should do nine months of what we call taught modules. So that's kind of more traditional learning with lectures, seminars, and then you will do a three-month research project. Um, that can be on any subject that you're interested in, obviously related to the, the kind of overall degree programme. Um, you wouldn't necessarily work for a company during that time, but you will certainly engage potentially with organisations to gather your research. Um, you will do a lot of data collection um, and then that will be then um, filtered down into your research um, to, to um, be put into a dissertation. Um, and it's a good opportunity for you to have a go into in depth in one particular area and it also helps you decide whether maybe you want to do more research in the future as well so whether you want to go on to a PhD or something like that um, and it's a really good opportunity to um, build your knowledge um, we are a research intensive university so the University of Birmingham is very very research intensive and um, we're part of the Russell group a lot of our funding and um, we get uh, from the government for different research you know we've done a lot at the moment in terms of Covid research um, there's a huge amounts going on and all of that filters down to our students in terms of their modules um, and obviously the research projects that they also take part in as well. Okay thank you and next question about leaving in Birmingham. Can you tell us the typical <clears throat> of the people there in Birmingham? Yeah, so I'm not from Birmingham originally. I was from a very, very small village um, and I came to Birmingham to study back in 2003, so a very long time ago now. Um, but it's a very, very welcoming city. It's really multicultural. That's one of the things I particularly enjoyed myself. Um, you know, you meet people from all around the world um, that are studying, working, living within the city. Um, that means the food is quite multicultural as well. So you can find, um, you know, Indonesian food, you can get nasi goreng, you can get your nice coffees and stuff like that. You know, we've got lots of Indonesian places um, and Malaysian places, Singaporean. And, and that's one of the things I particularly like is that kind of really um, enriched culture. Uh, there's also a lot of open spaces in Birmingham as well. So we've got lots of parks, lots of canals. 
Um, so it's a really nice place if you like outdoors, um, if you want to walk around. Obviously, it's a lot cooler uh, than Jakarta, so you can actually just go out and spend a little bit of time walking around the city, exploring, and you're not going to get too hot um, because it's, it's, it's a nice temperature here. Um, and actually, that's another thing that I would say that a lot of students enjoy about the UK probably in general is our weather. Uh, I know a lot of people worry about that, uh, but actually when they get here, that's something that they really enjoy. Um, you know, it changes. Um, each season is different. At the moment, we're sort of going through autumn into kind of um, uh, into the kind of uh, winter season. So the weather's cooling down a bit, but the trees are beautiful. Uh, you know, there's um, I, I live next to a park, so I can go and see squirrels and different um, uh, you know environments. So that's something again that I think students really enjoy. Um, Birmingham, as well as a city, is the second largest city so there's a lot going on in terms of um, cultural events I did touch on earlier that we're going to be hosting the Commonwealth Games in 2022 so that's going to be a really big event for the city and um, we have lots of different um, uh, acts that come here and perform um, so there's a huge amount of students they would definitely never be bored here uh, we've also got shopping centres uh, really large ones not quite as big as the ones that you have out there in Jakarta which I've been to uh, stay open pretty much all night as well um, but we do have quite a lot of shopping centres as well so I'm sure um, the students will, will really enjoy that um, and obviously from a cultural point of view we've got lots of obviously religious um, provision within the city so whatever religion students are from um, whether they be Sikh you know um, Muslim um, Hindu Christian, whatever it is, we've got all of that provision within the cities, lots of mosques nearby to the university, halal food is ready uh, available as well. Um, so I think that's quite a, a nice thing, you know, when students are coming from um, a different place, you know, to be able to settle in and not worry about all those, uh, those aspects as well. Okay, thank you. That's very interesting. How <laughs> about the living cost there? Okay, so it depends obviously on your lifestyle, <laughs> um, but probably in the region of about 10 to 15,000 pounds per year. Um, obviously, like I say, it really depends on, on what you are spending your money on. You know, if you go shopping every weekend, then it's going to be a little bit higher. Um, but realistically, probably around 12,000 would be enough um, to cover sort of um, social activities, um, transport um food all that kind of thing um so it's not too expensive it's a lot cheaper than london i mean certain things will be uh, more expensive than obviously in jakarta uh you know transport and public tra transport might be a little bit more expensive and food and things like that um but generally it's not an expensive city to live in okay the next one there's someone who's interested about the foundation program can you tell us more about that yeah, sure. So we offer a foundation program for students that are maybe doing national curriculum within um, Indonesia. Um, and that is basically a one year program which will bridge that gap between the education system in Indonesia and also the in uh, education system in the UK. Um, so students will do that usually for one year. They'll join us um, and that is on our campus. So it's not a private provider. It's delivered by University of Birmingham. So you're a University of Birmingham student from day one they will cover various modules related to their degree um, and then they will also do a little bit of English studies and academic skills and stuff like that as well um, application for the foundation is done directly through our website so once a student's ready to apply um, they can just submit that application through our website and would be most happy to um, receive that and if they do have any questions about foundation please get in touch with me on my email and I can always put you in touch with the foundation department as well Okay, next question. Uh, are there any aspects of an application that can compensate for low GPA? Yeah, so there's always an element of flexibility. Um, so we, it depends on how low the GPA is. You know, we are an academic institution and we are quite strict on our, our sort of entry requirements. However, if a student has maybe significant work experience, if they've done other activities you know volunteering stuff like that that's related to the degree program that can sometimes go in their favor so it's not an absolute no um if students are worried um they can always contact me and i can check with the department whether they can consider them um my email address is on the screen um so i can always check that um but there is always that kind of flexibility depending on what students have done we can sometimes um 
not waive the grades, but we can accept a slightly lower grade if they've got good work experience or if they've got something else um, that will go in their favor. Okay, that's so helpful, thank you. Uh, next one, is there any possibility to do a part-time job there? Yeah, absolutely fine. So most students um, can, well, majority of students will be able to work up to 20 hours per week alongside their studies. Um, as a university, we'd probably recommend a little bit less, uh, maybe sort of 10 to 12 hours, um, but it's totally up to the students. You know, that's the, the kind of requirement that the, the maximum that's um, allowed by the government is that sort of 10, uh, sorry, 20 hours. Um, we have a job shop on campus. We have um, a careers fair, a job fair, usually within the first couple of weeks. So if they want to find part-time work, it's generally not an issue. Um, and they can work on or off campus. So conversely to in the US, whereas usually it has to be an on-campus job, in the UK it can be on or off, off campus. Um, so sometimes students work in a coffee shop, a bookshop, a restaurant. Um, and it's, it's quite a nice experience. I, I personally did that myself. I worked in a big department store in, in the, the, the restaurant there. Um, and it was quite a nice experience. I just did sort of six hours on a Saturday, six hours on a Sunday. Um, and it was a nice way to get a little bit of money, but also meet other people improve your English you know you're speaking to staff then and, and and customers and stuff as well um so I'd always encourage it um but yeah maximum 20 hours a week if you are coming for an undergrad course and maybe you've got summer holidays you can actually work full-time in the summer holidays as well okay thank you we're almost at the end of our Q&A but I want to know uh, since you handle most of the Asian region uh, what do you think would be a challenge for students from Southeast Asia once we are there? I mean, I think probably one of the biggest shocks to the system is when you arrive is the weather. <laughs> um, like I say, most students eventually like it. But I think when you first come, that can be quite a big shock to the system. So I always say prepare, you know, preparation is key. Um, make sure you get a nice big coat or a big hoodie to bring with you. Because I think that is something that is a bit of a shock to the system because it's probably not, not if you've not traveled out of Southeast Asia before, the weather is something completely different. Um, and also, obviously, a bit of homesickness. Um, you know, even I, I moved from, like I said, from a small village to uh, Birmingham, and even I had a little bit of homesickness, and I was still essentially in the same country. Um, so always bring things that to remind you of home photos um and and everyone's keen to know you know uh, you know most people at university want to find out about um other people you know they'd like to know more about indonesia they'd like to know more about your city and your culture and you know the the batik that you wear and all that kind of thing um so bring that along and de definitely share that with um with the, the places as well that's certainly something that I would encourage is to make sure that you feel comfortable, you know, dress your room, you've got your own personal bedroom, you know, make sure you put a bit of your culture and environment to remind you of home there as well. Hey, uh, this will be the last question. Can you tell us a fun fact about University of Birmingham that not many people Okay, know. Um, yeah, sure. So um, Birmingham is uh, quite close. I don't know if Many of you have heard of Lord of the Rings. I'm sure you have. Um, so it's quite a popular, obviously, book and film. Um, so Tolkien, uh, that wrote Lord of the Rings, is actually from very, very close by um, to Birmingham, a little village nearby. Um, and so the clock tower uh, that you've seen probably on the videos earlier um, was actually the inspiration for the two towers. So the, the book that he wrote about the towers, um, that was actually the inspiration um, for that as well. So uh, that's a fun fact about Birmingham. Um, and it's just nice to know that we've made our, our mark on history uh, uh, with our clock tower. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for all the information. If no you problem. guys still want to get to know about University of Birmingham, you can check their website. So thank you so much, Kitty. I thank you so much you. Lutman. you've been fabulous thank you very much for um, moderating for us today it's been really nice to be here um and hopefully we we can all keep in touch and and next time maybe in person but yeah we'll hopefully see some of you over the weekend as well thank you so i'd like to remind you again that 
we are going to have a virtual fair this Friday and Saturday. You'll be able to consult directly and ask further questions related to your study. Kindly access event.eitf.id and all the information will be there. Thank you for watching this session. We'll be back for the last session right after this. Thank you, everyone.